Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over 5.03, Specific Heat. Have your calculator and your notes ready. Our first word for this lesson is heat capacity. Heat capacity is the ability of a substance to store or release thermal energy. Every substance in the universe can hold different amounts of energy or different amounts of heat, which is what we're specifically talking about. Example, the heat capacity of water is how much heat water can hold. And that amount of heat that a glass of water can hold is different than a glass of orange juice could hold, which is different than a glass of liquid mercury could hold. So every substance can hold a different amount of heat, and that is called the heat capacity. So heat capacity depends on the substance. And heat capacity is the ability to store thermal energy, and it influences how much time it takes an object to heat up or to release that heat. And of course, the releasing of heat we call cooling off. Specific heat capacity, or specific heat, they mean the same thing. It's the heat capacity for a specific substance, and it's the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. So in other words, I have one gram or one milliliter of water. And, and if you want to know about how big a milliliter is, if you look at your pinky finger, look at your little finger, that, if that was a bottle, it would hold about 10 milliliters. Okay, so your pinky finger is about 10 milliliters. And I know everybody's fingers are different based on if you're a guy or a girl and whether you're tall or short, but it's an estimate. Okay, so your pinky finger would be about the size of a 10 milliliter jar. So I want to know how much heat it takes to raise one milliliter or one gram of substance, a total of one degree Celsius. And if I know how much heat that is, that's my specific heat or my specific heat capacity. The abbreviation is capital C, and the unit is joules per gram degrees Celsius. So how much heat it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. So that's where those units come from. Why are specific heat and heat capacity important? Well, it's how and why objects heat up or cool off, or in other words, release heat. Scientists and engineers take advantage of this property when choosing construction materials and when designing heating and cooling systems for cars. Okay, you do not have to take notes on this slide. A car's radiator uses water to transfer heat away from the engine. Substances with high specific heats are used to transfer heat. Because a substance's specific heat is related to the ability to store heat, substances with high specific heats are good for transferring heat. This property is critical for a car's cooling system. The fluid is water, or a mix of water and antifreeze. This mixture is circulated by a pump, and it absorbs heat from the car's engine. The heated water passes through the radiator, where a fan circulates air so that the warmed air is always replaced by cool air. The cooler water returns to the engine block and the process is repeated. So the reason they use water is because it can really hang on to a lot of energy and it can really take that heat away from the engine. Because otherwise your engine would overheat and your car would not work. You do not need to take notes on this slide either. The space shuttle and space station use radiators. Like your car, the space shuttle must eliminate heat. Most of the heat comes from the internal electronics and external sunlight. So the shuttle uses a cooling system similar to one in a car. It has heat exchangers that circulate water or liquid ammonia, both of which have high specific heats. So they can hold a lot of heat and therefore they can transfer the heat from where it's too hot, like by the engine in your car, to a different place where that heat can safely be released. The heat exchangers then transfer the heat to another heat exchange system that consists of aluminum tubes filled with Freon. Aluminum tubes make up the transfer tubes and the radiator material. Aluminum is used to prevent leaks and eliminate heat quickly. Freon is used because it will not freeze in the cold of outer space. So negative 157 
degrees Celsius, no big deal, the Freon, because it does not freeze until it hits the freezing point, which is the same as the melting point, which is negative 158 degrees Celsius. Yep, one degree away, that's all that matters. The radiators are located on the inside of the space shuttle's cargo bay doors. The doors must be open when the space shuttle is in orbit to release the transferred heat to outer space. The space station uses a similar system with five radiators that stretch out like solar panels. Astronaut Rick Mastrucino, I'm sure I said his name wrong, so Astronaut Rick works on a space station radiator during a spacewalk. So, okay, here he is. And that shows you how big these things are. Compared to him, figure he's an average guy, about 5'10", 6 feet tall. And you can really get an idea of how huge it is. All right, so let's come back down to Earth. And let's talk about an example that you have seen before. What heats up faster, water or a metal pan? So here I have an empty pan. Here I have a pan with water. Which one's going to heat up faster? The empty pan, right? All right. So let's say, again, I have one pan that is empty and one with water. So I heated them both up. They're super hot. Which will cool down faster, the water or the empty pan? The empty pan cools off faster. So hopefully you know that metal heats up really, really fast, right? And that's part of why the handle is not made of metal, so that you can safely grab it. But water, if you've ever boiled water, it takes like five minutes. It takes a while to get hot enough to boil. Well, it also takes a long time for that water to cool off. So water doesn't cool off instantly. It doesn't even cool off in a minute. It takes some time to cool off. And that cooling off, remember, is really releasing of heat. Whereas the metal, it gets hot really quick and it releases heat really quick. So it gets colder really quick. So if I were going to show that on a graph, I have my temperature. So my temperature up over time. So this one, high temperature, low temperature. This one, high temperature, low temperature. Which one of these graphs is water? Water is the blue line because it took a long time to heat up and a long time to cool off. Metal, heat up, cool off, it's really fast, right? And the fact that they take different amounts of time to heat up and cool off or heat up and release heat, that has to do with specific heat. And so, specifically, it's because the metal and the water have different specific heats. So let's find them in here. So let's find liquid water. What is the specific heat of liquid water? It's 4.18 joules. So it takes 4 joules of energy to raise 1 gram of water a total of one degree Celsius. And one gram of water equals one milliliter of water. And so again, your pinky finger could hold about 10 milliliters. All right, now let's look at metal. Let's pick a metal. Uh, gold. Look at gold. Gold specific heat is 0.13. Okay, now think of money. You have 13 cents versus $4 and 18 cents. Um, that's a pretty big difference. If you went to the store and a candy bar was 13 cents and then you went to Target and that same candy bar was $4, um, you'd have issues, right? So on this scale, that's a huge amount too. Water has a much, much higher specific heat than gold does. The blank the specific heat, the faster the substance heats up, and the faster it gives up heat, or in other words, cools off. All right, so again, metals heat up quicker and metals cool down quicker. And so the blank, the specific heat, the faster it heats up and cools off. And it would be the lower the specific heat. So a low specific heat, it heats up quickly, it releases heat quickly. It gets hot, it gets cold. Okay, well, what can we say about phases of the same substance? So let's look. I have ice, which is 2.05. I have liquid water, which is 4.18. And I have water vapor, which is 2.08. So 
So what would you say about that? Well, when I have a big table, I like to pull out my data. So liquid water has a specific heat of 4.18, sorry, bumped the wrong key, 4.18. And water vapor is 2.08. And ice is 2.05. So now that I have this in here, now I can make some conclusions. And I can say, well, liquid water has a much higher specific heat, which means it takes blank energy to heat up and blank to cool off or heat released than other phases of water, right? So what would we answer this with? Liquid water has a much higher specific heat, which means it takes more or less energy to heat up. And then more or less energy needs to be released to cool off. It would be more. So again, the higher the specific heat, the more energy it takes to raise one gram of the substance one degree Celsius. So the more energy it takes to heat up and the more energy must be released before it is cooled off. Now, this idea is what our lab is about. So this is a homemade foam cup calorimeter. So it's one cup, and then there's a rubber band in between, and there's another cup inside of it. So it's very insulated. And then inside this cup, they're going to put some ice. And you can see they have a thermometer in it. And they're going to measure what's happening inside the cup. So how do you find the specific heat of a substance? One way to find the specific heat of an object is by using a calorimeter, such as you did in the heat transfer lab lesson. So we're going to be doing that. It's scheduled for tomorrow. You will need to do the following steps, and you do not need to write this down. One, fill the calorimeter with a known amount of water and measure its initial temperature. Two, measure the mass of the substance of interest. Three, heat the substance of interest to a known temperature. Typically, the substance can be heated in a boiling water bath where it will eventually reach 100 degrees Celsius. Four, place the hot substance in the calorimeter. The temperature of the water that was originally in there obviously is going to increase because you put in hot water. Measure the final temperature of the water. If you know the mass of the substance and the mass of the water, the temperature changes of both the substances and water and the specific heat of the water, you can calculate the substance's specific heat. So in other words, because we know that the specific heat of water, we know how much energy it takes to heat up one gram of water, one degree Celsius. Therefore, we can use that by putting an object in to a calorimeter, or into kind of basically this sealed area, and then you can figure out its specific heat. So for example, I would take a quarter. A quarter, like what you use for money. Okay, take a quarter and I would put it in boiling water. So my quarter was 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, then I would put my quarter inside of the cups and I would measure what the new temperature of the water was based on the heat that got released from the quarter into the cold water that was in here. So hot quarter, it's 100 degrees Celsius. You put it into the cool water. Obviously, the water is going to heat up because it's going to take heat from the quarter. And that change in heat is what you're measuring to find the specific heat of the quarter. Here is the specific heat equation. You definitely need to have this written down. So capital C is the abbreviation for specific heat. And it equals Q, which is heat, divided by M, mass in grams, times the change in temperature. This triangle is the Greek letter delta, and it means change in. As you learned in the calorimetry lab, heat, again abbreviated Q, measured in the units of joules, can be calculated from the equation Q heat equals the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. The mass is in gram, temperature is in degrees Celsius. So keep it in Celsius this time. This equation can be used to calculate the heat absorbed of water by Q equals MC delta T. Or you can rearrange it over here. Same equation. Write them both down. Because the calorimeter is a closed system, meaning it's contained, right? That's why we used one that was so insulated. We could ignore the outside temperature because this was insulated enough to give us a good measurement. 
The heat absorbed by the water equals the heat given off by the unknown 